Hold there a minute. Uh, does anyone uh, know what uh, part on the Christian calendar uh, we are at today? What is today? What Sunday is today? I guess it's Pentecost. Pentecost. Yeah. We know uh, on the way out the door there's going to be some uh, little flames that have been made. You can pass out. You can use them for a bookmark or, or wherever you might want to use them. But we're going to read about the story of Pentecost. But before we do that, okay, there was a couple of three different people and within a very short period of time, a couple of weeks ago, had asked me, uh, what is Ascension Sunday? So certain groups actually were closing their stores. Uh, what is Ascension Sunday? Why is it so important? And you'll find it on some calendars if you look. Most of us want to know when Thanksgiving or Christmas or Labor Day is. But Ascension Sunday is, is, is mentioned on some calendars. And uh, Ascension Sunday is essentially what we read. Uh, we're going to take a look at that. If you notice the entry in your bulletin there, Acts chapter 1, 1 through 9, all right? Let's just take a quick look at that. We're just going to touch on that and bounce right off of it, but it is very important. Uh, the former account I made, O Theophilus, Acts chapter 1, verse 1 of all, that Jesus began to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. 50 days is the marking number of days that this occurred after uh, Jesus was raised from the dead. Always remember that. And being assembled together in verse 4 with him, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For truly... For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Verse 6, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? It was still always their thought and their hope that this Jesus would come as a God and bring his army and just take everything right over militarily and, and have full command of the known world at that time, of course. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? You'll see, read that repeatedly and repeatedly uh, in, in earlier parts of the Gospels, if you look at those Gospels. That's what they wanted. That's what they, they was hoping that he would do. <clears throat> Seven, he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses uh, to you. To me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and at the end of the earth. That's a lot of geography. Okay? And the last one about the Ascension Sunday. And when they had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up in a cloud, received him out of their sight. And if you read a little bit more there, you will find out that it mentions he will return in the same way that he was taken up. And you can only imagine the situation at that point. Okay, now, now he's gone again. Uh, and they're kind of hanging there waiting and some time passes and then we quickly flip over and I know it's a little extra reading today but it's really part of the deal, okay? And Pentecost Sunday is here. Uh, sometimes it, it arrives in May but this year it arrives in June as, uh, but we can have Pentecost Sunday anywhere we want to put it. I've moved it around in May before. It doesn't really matter. But uh, chapter 2, Acts 2, Verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Okay, they were all gathered in God's house. I want you to imagine that. Now here we have a small group of about 20-some people, okay? Let's say there's a thousand people, or let's, or, we don't know exactly how many were at the synagogue at that time. But they were all gathered there and uh, waiting with one accord, okay? That means they were all thinking along the same lines, okay? And suddenly there came a sound. Put yourself there if you can. Imagine it happening in this house right here. A sound from heaven is of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. The whole place, all of a sudden, you hear a, a mighty rushing wind, okay? There appeared to them divided tongues as a fire. One sat on each one of them. And you're saying, well, I mean, this, this is a good story and all, but... But I take the scriptures literally, and what it says happened, happened, okay? And God certainly has the power to do it. There are no limits that we can place on an almighty God like him. 
And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. In this case, the other tongues, as you'll read here shortly, are the tongues of, of foreigners. It's like in this room right here, we had people from France and Portugal and Italy and Germany and other places around the world who couldn't speak English and we don't understand their language. We're all gibbering back and forth prior to this occurrence, okay? There are sometimes people try to bring in uh, the speaking in tongues, which is a different thing. It's a, but in this case, um, we can't understand each other, okay? It's just, uh, uh, it's just a problem that we have. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. That kind of puts a stamp on it, okay? And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in their own language. And you can only imagine if all of a sudden we can understand anybody from anywhere around the world. They were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? Now how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes, Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia. We read these every year. Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Verse 11, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexing to one another, whatever could this mean? And you've you got to just think about it. And, of course, you're always going to have the mockers, uh, those who, uh, and others mocking said they're full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And you can go back in Joel and find these words. 17, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and old men will dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon into blood. Before the coming and the great an awesome day of the Lord. Uh, and my old King James would say, the great and notable day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass, and this is the last verse, but it's a good one, isn't it? And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Always remember, I always emphasize this in any portion of scripture where word, this word is given. It doesn't matter what clothes you wear or where you come from or what car you drive, or what country, what language you speak, how much money you make on an annual basis. It says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's no exclusions. And it can be done instantly. You don't have to wait for the third hour of the day, or the fourth of the month, or you have to wait again for another cycle. Uh, it's whoever, when you come to the Lord and ask him, he's there, his hand is out, he's waiting for you, and he's offering you that, that grace uh, to be saved. This is the word of the Lord. So we bow our heads for prayer. Father, we do praise you again for this beautiful day. We thank you for the blessings of your word. We thank you for being able to hold this, this book of yours up in the air before people and to, and to carry it around wherever we want to. It's a blessing. And we thank you for providing us with that blessing. It's rich. As we look to your word today, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit, as you impart to each and every one of us who will allow you to work a special meaning, a special knowledge, a special insight, and also a very special challenge to take your word wherever we go. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yesterday, I was spraying corn, okay? Some of you have done that. Some of you watched it done. It's like so many jobs. You have to, you have to watch uh, all the things that are going on, your gauges and all this and that. And mine is old-fashioned, so there's no electronics to tell me if any tip or nozzle is, is misfiring. So you, you watch it. Uh, and it's quite, a, it's quite a boom on the old thing. Uh, it's 20-some-odd feet, I forget now. But you have to watch everything. Make sure all your hoses are connected. 
But after a while, you kind of get used to the sounds and you look back and you kind of get the idea and, and it gets to be mundane. Acre after acre after acre. Once in a while the deer would come out and frolic and one night as a coyote came out and circled around a few times, I don't know whether I was looking like I was good coyote meat or what, but uh, I, they don't usually do that. And the deer and the turkeys and turkeys are clawing at the young green corn because they know exactly that there's a kernel underneath, all these kind of things you see. But yesterday was just such a beautiful day. I was up at the base of the mountain, not far from the cobble where we took the young people and older people and all kinds of people on a hike a couple of years ago. Right up on the side of the mountain, beautiful day, just gorgeous. Whatever you were doing, I'm sure you uh, experienced the same thing. Taking in all the things that we've taken in in our country in these last days and weeks, all the trials, all the troubles, uh, different things from shootings to killings, uh, to stabbing uh, hospital workers, to that, all these kind of things that we know so much about. And I said, well, let's, let's change the channel a little bit. And, and so I popped the radio on. It's on the old John Deere, the radio still works, the seat still works, you know. It, it's like the old song, you didn't care what kind of car he had as long as the radio was okay. I remember that song. But everything works good on this old tractor. And, and I just popped the radio on. The family life is set on that one. And they had the kids out. And the kids' hours okay. It's good stuff. I mean, it really can be funny. I, I like the pond, you know, with all the animals. But I said, no, I said today, just for a little while, I'm going to turn it. Well, I flipped it a little bit to the right. And... Uh, 95.3 came on, the oldie station from the 60s and the 70s and all that. I was just a wee little kid in the 60s, but the 70s I remember a little bit more. He started playing a few things, and um, the old fellow that was doing the, the host of the show, I, I wonder about him, but uh, he was hanging in there. And uh, they played a song, okay? And you see the title of that uh, message here today. I don't usually often cross up the secular stuff or the for that, but and I had to had to break tradition and use the fourth word in my title. Do you remember the group Bachman Turner Overdrive? Some of you older ones will certainly remember that. If not, you can Google it and figure it out. But I'm sure you've heard it somewhere. Um, Taking care of business was the song that came on, and they were firing it off pretty good. And I kind of kind of got to tapping uh, my toe on the floor of the thing, and 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 it, it just got to thinking a little bit about all the things again. I want you to look at that title, lay that title on, on the side there for a little bit. The problem when you listen to something like that too long, when, when you're my age anyway, I was starting to zone, okay? I was, into the, I was going back to the 70s and remembering things. I was riding down the road in my rusty 67 Galaxy 500 and listening to that same song on an AM radio out of Elmira, knowing when it was gonna thunder shower because it was starting to crack and, and snap and rattle. Or if I gassed it really high RPMs, the buzz on the radio got a little loud, and that kind of thing. And I don't know, just to humor you, just to show you that God can fix anything, certainly put these glasses together. Tammy had an old Toyota Corolla, drove it for years, had better than 300,000 miles on it. Finally, it wouldn't pass inspection anymore because he said, you're gonna be Fred Flintstone. Uh, you're going through the floor, and the thing would, just wouldn't die. About, well, I'd say maybe 150,000, uh, the antenna for the radio, which is one of these little things that goes back out across and kind of flops around and it rusted off, it was gone. These are my memories, you know. So I said, I wonder what would happen. Now sometimes that's good when Vern says that, sometimes, most of the time it's okay. I got my little drill out and selected a little bit of a bit and drilled in just a little bit to shine up the interior part where that antenna rusted off. It rusted what it did. Pulled it back out, it's still connected internally, apparently. I said, what will I put in there? So I grabbed a 1 8 welding electrode. <laughs> put it in there and took an end of a plastic screwdriver and tapped it a little bit. As I tapped it, it kind of curled up a little bit, just a little bit. Turned it on, that radio came on. It was better than it had been ever, I think. Remember when you pulled into the parking lot, they wondered, they'd never seen a Toyota with an antenna like that. Did you order that special? 
I probably could have made lots of money if I'd have patented it. But the things that, that can be done, and, and as you remember and you call back these things, okay? There's power in the Holy Spirit. There's power in what God can do. And again, I'm still mulling these things back and forth, what's happened in our country of late. And it's really bothersome for me, and I'm sure it is for you, you know, when, when doctors and nurses are losing their lives and, and uh, people are, you know, as I said last week, and we're kind of bouncing off last week's message. Lives are precious. Everybody is special. There's nobody that isn't important in God's world, okay? Somebody says, well, where did you hear that you shouldn't kill somebody? All you got to do is look at the Ten Commandments, all right, in the book of the Bible. Dr. Stanley preached a sermon here a while back. I listened to parts of it on the way back home with the truck. He said, everything that you and I ever need in this world to know is right in this book. Power of the Holy Spirit reveals it. And somebody would, might say to you, well, I have a degree in this and that and the other thing, and I've studied, and I've studied readings of books and this and that, and I'm still studying. The Scripture is one of those things that you can look at it for the rest of your life, and it'll continue to reveal something. You can't study it like you could uh, a mechanic's manual or, or a law book or something like that. It doesn't work that way. It's just, it's just dripping with truth. But what I see, and again, I'm still zoning, you know, I, I imagine that I just pulled up to the red light. I've told you that one before. I, uh, one of my uh, helper, rubber helpers things I put on my clothes, spring popped out, boom. The bumper was loose. You've heard the story about the bar cleaner paddle. The five gallons of roofing tar in the trunk that made it past inspection. Prior to that, my grandmother was sitting in a cloud of dust on the back road. All these things came to mind, and yet I would constantly migrate back to my early years and the spiritual instruction that I had. Again, some parallels to last week's message. I want you to remember those things. And all the things that people will ponder and discuss, and politicians will dicker back and forth, and people will place blame on each other, you can blame the tools. You can blame a weapon. I remember one time somebody told me, you ought to quit driving that big diesel truck. I said, what for? It's a weapon of mass destruction. I hadn't really thought of it that way, but in, in many ways it is. And sometimes people seek to do people harm with a vehicle. And we can mull it and mull it and mull it and blame each other and do this and that and the other thing. But back in the day when I, where I was owned at, and you got to pull yourself out. You ever see one of those little Star Trek episodes where the guy's got to, sometimes Mr. Spock would have to do some things to him and get him back. But I zoned myself back with some candy and some M&Ms and a bottle of iced tea. Plus I had to get out and make some adjustments on the tank and all those kind of things. There's no other hope in this world. Dr. Stanley did a wonderful job with it, with it the other night than this right here. Last week's message, as you remember, Charlie Daniels. One thing that's wrong with the world today, the only thing is people have put their Bibles away. Everything you need in life to learn and to know is right here in the pages of this book. Everything. And I know you're going to study and expand your career or whatever. That's not really what we're talking about. But if you want a place to put your foot down, a launching pad, place to come back to, a secure spot in life, this is it. And the only way we're going to change our world, our country in which we live, and now I'm going to put something on your shoulders, on my shoulders, on the local church's shoulders, on the church of the world. And I'm not talking just Methodists. I'm talking about anybody who claims the claims of Christ, wherever you come from. In the book of Acts, as we read it, the Holy Spirit was put down. They were given the orders to preach the gospel to the uttermost parts of the earth. First it was locally, right? The uttermost parts of the earth. 
And they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. If you read further in that book of Acts, maybe you don't read the Bible at all, maybe you never have, but if you want some entertainment, it's good stuff. Acts 3, 6, one of my favorite verses. Disciples said, we don't have anything. I don't have any silver or gold, but one thing I've got is Jesus Christ. And his name, rise up and walk, and the, the lame man walked. He went away walking and leaping and praising God. And we had to act that out one time in Sunday school when I was in about the fifth grade, I think. And you should have seen this. It was part of the Children's Day thing. And, and uh, I'm going to mention that in a minute here. We had to run, they were running and leaping and running into each other to demonstrate the, the, the man who couldn't walk. But that's the kind of enthusiasm that God calls us to have. Whatever it is, the church needs to start taking care of business. And that's where the song title comes in. That's where it just rang true. And God does that to me once in a while. He does it to you, I'm sure. It's easy to put blame on this person and that person. But the world out there, the world referring to those who don't know Jesus Christ, haven't got a clue. But this is where, this is the answer. We need more Bible school. We need more Sunday school. When you have no appreciation or no value on life, something is disconnected. And that disconnect comes from not knowing this. And you and I know that as well as, as anybody else. And many of our young people out there do know. And I praise God for those that do. But there's plenty of work to be done. Taking care of business. The church has its charge. By that I mean, look in the book of Acts. As a contemporary song when they play it on Family Life once in a while, we are still called. It's the same power that they had in that day. It hasn't changed. It hasn't lessened. Sometimes people say, well, it was exciting then. It's like throwing a rock in the pond, and after a while, the ripples begin to, to dissipate. No, it's the same power, the same God, because he lives forever. It hasn't changed. To me, that always grabbed me, even in earlier years, that as you read the accounts in the Bible, certainly in the book of Acts, and, and all the other things that the disciples did with Jesus' help, the same God, the same power, is with us right here, this very moment. That's why I'm here. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead. The same power. The same power that rose Lazarus from the grave. The same power that fed the 5,000. It's the same. God hasn't changed and he never will. So if you have anything else that bothers you, that it just wears out or calls out or whatever it might be, Last year when I was spraying corn, uh, the old uh, PTO connection that goes onto the pump just disintegrated. Fell apart as I was going up the road and then uh, as I was walking to pick up the pieces to see what I could salvage, a neighbor pulled by, uh, you need any help? I said, I'm looking for parts. And uh, so he looked at me and I, I finally he pointed to one and I got the rest of them. And I cobbled that together to finish the year. This year I went out to Tractor Supply and got a nice new one. Gave me some fits to put it on, but I finally got it on there, and now it works great. The same power, the same spirit is yours in the time in which you live. And no one is, is not worth anything. If anybody ever tells you that, that's wrong. That's not scriptural. That's not the way it is. The same God. And I like to know that I can work and serve a God who always was, don't ask me how to figure that out. It is now and always will be forevermore. The same that God. You can't have a finer endeavor. Everything else that we strive for in this life is great. It's noble. But it disappears. It rusts out. It gets stolen. It caves in. That's what the Bible says. If we can't have it. It won't stay with us. You ever see a hearse with a trailer hitch on it? Remember that old song? That's not so old, but it's a, you've heard that one before. I've never seen one. Never. So I'm going to move down the line here a little bit on some things that I, that I thought. The enthusiasm that these early people had for the church, okay? 
back in the 70s and the 80s when snowmobiling was big, and I always come back to that because it was one of my, it still is. I took a training course to become a safety instructor for snowmobiling through the, uh, through the Pennsylvania State. Then it was called DER, I think it's something else now, but uh, you had to take a course and learn and be trained. And I operated out of the Troy School and the SRU School out here. And kids, uh, you, gotta, you gotta envision the day. If you weren't in that day, everybody had a snowmobile, I think, for a while in the 70s. Literally every farmer, some had two or three or four, I know we had four, so it was a big thing. When, and then when they passed that law that kids, you know, in order to operate a snowmobile under 16 had to take a safety course, and, oh, they go, I don't believe in that. Well, I said, well, it's whatever. Just send them if you believe in them, you know. Well, they used to send us a pack of old films, the old 16 millimeters, and if you're old enough, you know what I'm talking about. If you're younger, you might want to research it. But there are ordinary crazy things, and you have this big projector sitting on a table, and you threaded it up and fired it up and hope it ran. And I told you the story about the unsafe ace and all the kids, they just loved it when the train was coming down the track and the last ooh-ooh-ooh, and he goes, ooh-ooh, you know. And they, were, they would just get all hyped up. Maybe it was me, I don't know, but we, I invited special speakers. Uh, there was, uh, you know, we had the game commission this would come one night and the law enforcement would come another night and uh, different people would come and take part in it as well. It was a, it was a week long uh, endeavor, that's what it was. Similar to your hunter safety thing. And then the International Snowmobile Association would send a really big film. It was kind of in their interest to do that. They wanted to sell snowmobiles, but now we're going back to the oldie station again, okay? I can't remember what group it was that sang it, but it's called Come Sail Away, okay? And um, they started to play that. And that was the theme of music, the background music to that film. And every time they would come out and dive off a cliff, the scene was always in the Rocky Mountains, and dive off a cliff with those snowmobiles. The kids would get all excited. Problem was someone would go home and try to get mom and dad to buy them a new one, like the new one they saw in the promotional film. And they would go away enthusiastic, is what I'm saying, okay? Really buzzed about snowmobiling and, and being safe about it, hopefully. I saw some things that didn't, uh, didn't quite connect with their training, but uh, it was good anyway. So what I'm gonna close out today with, all right? Today is Pentecost Sunday. Hopefully there's enough of those little flames out there for you. Put them in your Bible. God calls you and I today to have the same enthusiasm for what he did. The church is still alive, okay? Somebody asked me, they said, well, what do you think's really going on? It seems like we're falling away from the gospel and many things. The only thing that I can tell you is what I was told once. That the further you go down in the dark hole, <laughs> ever been in a room before where somebody shut the lights off? It's a place where there wasn't any other light. It's pretty dark. I can see pretty good in the dark outside, but I've never had an issue with that. But when it's dark, and there's no light, it's dark. And the further down the hole you go, and the further you get into that darkness, when Jesus comes to revive maybe the church as a whole, revive you and I as a person, it's just all that much more dramatic to see. Sometimes it happens to the individual and they, they'll come to you later and say, this is where I was and this is where I am now. Praise God. But I feel our country needs from wherever you are and whoever's listening, as a church, we need to start to take care of business. And the world will see that there is an answer and the things that are going on aren't normal and that God can bless he can use people, and there are answers. But it's up to us to publish it and send the word out to those who are wandering in sin. I don't know a better way to put it. Uh, I hope I got something to you today. But just remember, the evil one, Satan, he's on duty 24-7, 365. And his special target is our young people, okay? That's who he wants. The older ones were a little more salty and will do, uh, but uh, he wants them. 
Pray for your schools. Pray for your leaders. Jody was talking about next year's Troy School District. He wanted me to send you the word if you want to drive a bus. He's in charge of that, and he can't find anybody. And a lot of them have already resigned uh, at the end of this year. I'm sure he's not alone in his district. But just pray. Pray that the world would change through Jesus Christ, through the power of his Holy Spirit, and the challenges that he leaves with us. And it may be just you, it may be just me, or it may be all of us here. But the world can change. No matter how much Satan works, God has prevailed, okay? Always remember that. So shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Father, we do praise you again for a beautiful day in which we can gather. No matter where we find ourselves in this world or in this life, you are there. And you will be there with us in the life to come. We pray that you would help us to recognize the needs of others as we, as we come to be with them, wherever they might be. Help us to lend a helping hand Help us to show them the kindness and the knowledge of one whose name is Jesus, that there is something special about those who carry the cross. We do pray that our world would change, that there would be newness of life, that there would be a freshness, a, a light shining, a hope instead of darkness. Help us to continue to follow you through the power of your Holy Spirit, which you gave to us at Pentecost. Continue to bless us with that today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now a little peppier song as we close today, 64. Um, return there and stand.